Today we're going to talk about JavaScript, and this class won't make you an expert in JavaScript, because we're just covering two weeks of it. But I think what these two weeks of the course are meant to do is to give you a little bit of an idea of um, the role that JavaScript plays in web development. Um, we talked about, we drew this diagram, we talked about how we have a client who typically is someone running a web browser on their computer, but it could be someone using their phone, could be Google's crawler indexing websites, we talked about how we have this interaction, how the client makes requests to the internet that make it to a web server and gets a response back from the web server. And we talked about how most advanced websites, we don't have pre-written static HTML pages out there. We have server-side scripting. And this could be done in PHP or Python or ASP.NET or any number of different things. And when the server gets a request for a URL, the URL is put there. Any data that was entered from a form is going to be put there. Other information such as the platform that the client is on, the IP address of the client, and other information also goes to the server as part of that request package. The server takes it and processes it with these server-side scripts, which are programs. If any of you have done uh, C sharp programming or in other languages, it's programs just like these. Will often require reading a database, accessing a database. The server takes all these things and smashes them together, does its thing, does the processing, and creates custom for that request an HTML page, which consists of HTML. CSS, and JavaScript. So that's sort of the recipe that we have for modern dynamic web pages. Client makes a request, it goes to the server, and a response is sent back from the server in the form of a web page. So the script processes that request, uses a database, uses all the instructions in the script, comes up with an HTML page, and that gets delivered to the client. So that's how your Canvas page is going to look different than my Canvas page. They're going to have the same basic shell, but the courses that you're in are going to be different than the courses that I'm in. All right. Now, in this case, the server isn't simply just delivering completed web pages. The server is actually doing work. The server is actually creating web pages on the fly. Now, an observation you can make here is this client also is, in nearly all cases, going to be a computer or a device that can also process instructions. So all the computing power isn't on the side of the server. There's some computing power on the side of the client. And that allows the client to do some processing or some manipulating to the web page that has been delivered to it. All right? And it can do that without bothering the server. If it can do it without bothering the server, it's a win-win situation. It's a win for the client. It's a win for the server. 
So, let's talk about a mouse over menu. And we'll look at an example of this in a minute. I put my mouse over a menu and the menu expands. If the client side computer can run JavaScript code to do that effect, it's a win for the client because that JavaScript code can execute immediately. It's that JavaScript code has been downloaded along with the HTML and CSS. And it can execute immediately on the client. It doesn't have to take the trip through the wire, to the internet, to the server, have the server do something, and then return the result back. All right? So if the client can do some processing on its own, that processing can happen virtually instantaneously. All right? Doesn't have to wait for the server to be notified via a request that the client wants something done. And then the, the, the server, when it has a chance to do it, do it and send its results back through the internet to it. It's also good for the server because the server isn't given then these little tasks that the client could do just as well. The server is devoted then to the big tasks that only the server can do. All right? You would not want, and it would not be practical or even possible to have your client interact with the database. You want your server to do that. All right? Well, if the server was handling all these little tiny requests, show a menu, hide a menu, show a different menu, hide a different menu. If it was bothered with all those little tasks, it would slow down at doing the big tasks. So instead, let the client take care of their own little tasks, and the server then only has to deal with the big tasks interacting with the database. It's no different than like when in a restaurant they leave you ketchup and salt and pepper on your table. They're giving you the tools, you the client, the tools to take care of your problems on your own. So could you imagine what it would be like if, if like you wanted some salt for your fries? And you flagged the waiter down, waiter, I need some salt on my fries. And they sprinkled a little bit. Then they went away to do something else. And then you took it, it's like, you know, there's not enough salt on here. And you had to flag them down again and come over and salt. And then a minute later, oh, yeah, I want some ketchup too. Waiter's not going to be very happy with that. And the waiter is going to be doing all these little tasks for all the different clients in the restaurant and isn't going to have a chance to do the things that the waiter is supposed to do, the main jobs that the waiter is supposed to do, the big jobs. Whereas you are probably the world's foremost expert on how much salt you want on your fries, right? So why not give you the tools to handle those issues yourself? And that's sort of the same idea. You, can, you want more salt? Boom. If the salt shaker's there, you can get it immediately. So if we give the client a server-side, uh, I'm sorry, a client-side script, then it can handle its problems immediately and not have to wait for the server to come over. And then the server's not bothered by all these little requests as well. So a classic example of a client-side script is what I just described. And I'm going to make sure this page has it before I put the before I put the uh, lamp on. Is the NFL draft coming soon? Who will be the next disappointment for Cleveland? That should be what the headline says. Okay, so ESPN, this is a good case of some client side scripting. Notice uh, along the top here, we have a navigation bar that if we put our mouse on one of these, we see a sub-menu appear. 
and it appears immediately, right? I mean, pull out a stopwatch and see how long it takes when I put my mouse over and I'm like, oh, you can't even click it that fast. That's a tip-off that this probably isn't going through the Internet. Because if it went over through the Internet, even with a fast connection, there might be a little bit of a delay. So this is indicating to me that this more than likely is being done via client-side scripting. So let's describe what's really happening here. When this page loads, when I initially request this page, I go out to the server and I get the web page. What does a web page consist of? Well, it consists of HTML. That's all the stuff we've talked about so far. Consists of CSS, consists of images, and so on and so forth. It also consists of some content that we don't see. In other words, we can't see it, but that NFL menu is already there. It's just made invisible. How do you make something invisible? You can do it via CSS. All right. There also has been downloaded server-side code, I'm sorry, client-side code, client-side scripting, to show the menu and then hide the menu. And because it was delivered with the HTML, the client is going to run that code and it's going to take, and it's going to occur immediately. So I put my mouse over NFL, that menu appears. I take my mouse off of it, it disappears. NBA, Major League Baseball, college football, and so, down, so, so far down the line. So, this page gets HTML for the content. It gets CSS for the appearance, including making some things invisible. That's part of the appearance as well, whether you can see it or not. And then finally, there's JavaScript that changes the page. It changes the appearance of the page. In this case, by making menus appear and disappear based on what you do with the mouse. And that's the responsibility of client-side scripting. Server-side scripting creates a custom web page based on the request, form data, etc. Client-side scripting allows for small changes to be made to an existing web page through the user's interaction. Now, we're going to build up to writing a menu like this. But I'm going to start off by writing a, just a little web page that's going to show and hide a spoiler. Okay? So I'm going to create a web page that has a spoiler on it that you press a button, it will show the spoiler. You press a button again, it will hide the spoiler. Or you press a different button, it will hide the spoiler. Okay? That's, that's what I'm going to do now. And this is going to be much smaller scale, but it's going to involve some of the same things that we have in the menus on ESPN. Where the user does something, something appears, the user does something else, and it disappears. So let's start by creating our our web page in Notepad++.
Now I apologize if these are spoilers for you. Who is Luke Skywalker's father? And of course, Yoda is Luke Skywalker's father. Here's the HTML. The HTML right now only has these paragraphs, no CSS, so we're going to see both these paragraphs. So if I save it, doesn't do any good because the answer is visible. Alright, so let's go and make that invisible. How can I make this invisible? How can I make this paragraph invisible? Or I'm going to keep the code there, but I'm going to not going to show it. Am I going to do it with HTML or CSS? CSS. CSS. I'm glad, even if you don't know how to do it, that you know that it's a CSS question, right? Because anything that deals with the way it looks, including is it invisible, is a CSS question. You can do this a couple different ways. I'm going to do it this way. And maybe we'll talk a little bit about why I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to put a style, and again, just for con convenience, I'm going to put my style right on the same page. And I'm going to give a class of spoiler. And I'm going to say display none. All right. Display none means it's not going to appear. You can make it block, inline, or none. Block makes it a block tag. Inline makes it an inline tag. None means it's invisible. And it's invisible and it doesn't take up any space. I could also say visibility hidden, and then it would still take up the space. You just wouldn't see it. So I generally use display of none. Then I'm going to give this guy a class of spoiler. If I can type right. So now when I save it, I see it, the first part, but I don't see the second part. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to add some interactivity to this. I want to make it so that when I click the button, um, it shows the spoiler. Alright? So, this is where JavaScript comes in. Alright? So I'm going to put a button here. It's not a submit button because I'm not sending anything to the server. It's just a plain old button.
put an ID on this spoiler. Wouldn't have to put an ID on here, but I am going to. And I'm going to put an on-click attribute. An on-click attribute says, this is what I want to do when the user clicks on this button. I can assign some JavaScript code to happen when the user clicks on it. So what I want to have happen when the user clicks it is I want to change it from display being none to display being block. Alright? So it's almost like I wanted to open the program and type in well, for this guy, I want display to be block. Any attribute I can set via the HTML or the CSS, I can change via the JavaScript. So on click, I want to find the guy that I want to change. Now the guy that I want to change has an ID of Luke Father. So how do you point to something on your page. You use the ID for it. The ID, again, identifies something on the page. It uniquely identifies it, which means that it's the only thing on the page that has that ID. Alright? That's what we mean by uniquely identifies. There's not going to be two things that have the same ID. So, we're going to use a statement that's sort of a workhorse in JavaScript. Document get element by ID and I want the thing that has the ID of Luke father this is an expression in what's called the DOM D-O-M Document Object Model. The Document Object Model is the way that we use to point to things on the page that we want to change. Notice that these equal signs, or not equal signs, these quotation marks are the single quotes. We're going to have double quotes on the outside and single quotes on the inside. We'll see that again when we finish the statement. This part of the statement says that this paragraph is a paragraph I want to do something with. The paragraph that has an ID of Luke Father. That's what I want to do something to. What do I want to do to it? I want to change the style. What about the style do I want to change? I want to change the display. And what do I want to change the display to? I want to change it to block. I'll make it a little smaller so we can see everything in one shot. On click. On click is what's called an event. There's events for many things on the page. These would be the typical things that a user would likely to do. Right? If a user, you know, what can a user do? A user can click on things. A user can put their mouse on things. A user can press a key. Alright? So for all those things, there is an event. And we can put those events associated with some HTML elements and we can say what we want to have happen when that event occurs. So when the user clicks on this button, what we want is we want the page to find the thing that has an ID of Luke Father. That's this guy right here. This paragraph. 
This paragraph has an ID of Luke Father. What do we want to do to that paragraph? We want to change the style. What about the style do we want to change? We want to change the style so that the display is different. What do we want to send the display to? We want to set the display to black. Notice how this whole expression is within double quotes. So the double quotes indicate the start and end of the expression. Within the double quotes, we use single quotes to quote the value of the ID and the value that we want to change the display attribute to. All right, let's save this and make sure that it works. Show spoiler, we click the button, and then we see it. I know, it's shocking. How would we make it so we could hide the spoiler again? Exactly. We'd do the same thing, we'd create a new button. We still want to point to the same thing, except we want to change the style display, not to block, but to none. Show spoiler, hide spoiler. Yes. Yeah, we could do we could do this, and that's a good point. We can trigger this we can trigger this JavaScript based on a bunch of different kinds of events. The one event that we showed is we showed a uh, we showed a uh, a clicking in this case, so that when you clicked, it invoked the JavaScript. We could also do it based on a hover. So if you put your mouse over something, it made it visible. All right. Let's 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 do this. a separate copy of this page. make, I'm going to change this a little bit. I'm going to say, spoiler, I'm going to give a visibility of hidden. And I'm not going to do this with buttons. I'm going to say on mouse over, so I think this is what you're asking about. Document. Get element by ID.
document, get L1 by D, loop father. I want to change the style. I want to change the visibility of it. And I want to set the visibility to visible. So let's see how this would work. over on this guy. All right. It's not working. I'm not sure why. I could do one of two things. I could, one of several things, right? I could guess what's wrong and just try some things. Or I could just like randomly try typing different words and see if it gets. But if you're clever, you go to the development tools and look at the council. Because the council is going to tell me that there's something wrong. And I'm missing, I have an unexpected token of a curly bracket. So... And that is online. 12. Oh. Remember, we use single quotes inside the double quotes. wanted to make it disappear. I took my mouse off of it. Yeah. Um, what I could do, um, precisely what I would do is I would put a on mouse out event. To say on mouse out. document, get element, by ID, blah, 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 hidden. So now, put it on, I can see it, take it off, it disappears. On, see it off it disappears. Why is it still showing it's over here? Pardon me? Well, more or less, um, a paragraph, remember, a paragraph goes by default the width of the entire screen. So therefore, the stuff to the side here is still part of that paragraph, whereas if I go down a little bit, it disappears. So if you had that in like a section, that was like a specific size. Exactly. Like if I did this. 
if I were to say paragraph order 1px solid black with 50% adding 10 pixels If I go over there, it doesn't work, but if I go over here, it works. Okay, what are your choices of events? We've So far, we've seen three events. We've seen on click, we've seen on mouse over, and we've seen on mouse out. Those really are among the most popular ones. Those are the ones that typically people will be using to interact with the website. But we can do a look, uh, an examination. And here's a full list of them. Well, here's a list of some common ones. On change, that would be we can write code if a value of a text box changed. So if there was something in there, if there's nothing in there and you put something in there, we could write JavaScript code. On click, we've seen that. On mouse over, on mouse out, we've seen that. On key down, if you type a key. Uh, on load, those are all, uh, those are all some of the more common ones. Here's a list of all of them. you could do and there's a lot 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 more if you think for example any of you that are Twitter users as you type a character it tells you how many characters you have left that would be based on probably the on key up event all right there's actually uh, two events that you can write and sometimes it's useful as far as games go when you press the key down and when you let it up uh, when you let up the key is the on key up event, and you'd probably use that to count how many characters are in the field. Would these commands work on mobile? As long as the as long as the browser uh, supported JavaScript, yes, yes. And yeah, I mean most browsers support JavaScript to some level or another. Now, we're just doing one thing here, all right? We're just, we're just making something appear and disappear. Um, it doesn't take too much imagination to see that this is actually not far away from this, where we put our mouse on that and we get a new submenu. In terms of functionality, it's the same thing. Put your mouse on, something, some new content appears. Take your mouse off, that content disappears. But what are all the things that we can do to a web page? We can do just about anything to a web page. All right? Remember, any attribute that you have set uh, in your HTML or CSS, you can change via JavaScript. So we could change the color of a section of the page. So I'm going to just copy one of these. Just to have something to play with.
All right. We have we're going to have a paragraph that is red on the page. How are we going to change it to yellow? That paragraph is red. I want to click on this and change it to yellow. Well, what's the formula for doing JavaScript? We've sort of seen a couple examples, and from these we can sort of come up with a, a formula. First of all, we have the user event that's going to trigger the, interac the interactivity. In this case, it's the user clicking on the button that starts the ball rolling. So we're going to have on that button an on-click event, <coughs> all right, which we already have. Second thing we're going to use is we're going to use the DOM to point to the thing on the page that we want to change. In our case, I want to change this paragraph. So it's going to be document, get element by ID, not Luke Father, but Luke. I want to change the style of that. I want to change the background color. Now notice in CSS it's written background dash color. This is one difference. I can change that attribute, but I'm going to write it not as background dash color, but I'm going to write it background uppercase color equals, and then I can change it to yellow. So in this JavaScript example, and in, in a good number of the JavaScript examples you see, there's three pieces to it. The first piece is there's a event that gets the ball rolling, that initiates the JavaScript. And it's going to be on an HTML element, typically, and it's going to be something like on click, on mouse over, on key down, something like that. We're then going to use the DOM to point to the thing that we want to change. In this case, we want to change the thing that has an ID of Luke. So we're going to say document get element by ID Luke. That means literally document means this page. Get element by ID means find on this page the thing that has an ID of Luke. And what are we going to do to it? We're going to take the style and the background color and set it equal to yellow. There's all kinds of things associated with the style. What thing are we interested in specifically? We're interested in the background color. And what are we going to set that equal to? We're going to set it equal to yellow. So, now we have this, and boom, changes into yellow. <coughs> Now, one of the things that I'm going to mention here, and we'll talk about more next week, is troubleshooting. Um, and I already showed you the error council before. But what if I make a mistake like I use the ID of Luke S, or something like that, instead of Luke? If I were to do that, It doesn't work. I will look under more tools, developers tools, console, and it will tell me cannot read property style of null. And that's a little hard to understand. What that's telling me is there's no such thing as document get element by ID Luke S. I spelled the ID wrong. So Therefore, Luke S doesn't exist, so it's null. And so you can't change the style of something that doesn't exist, and therefore it gives me the error. Now, these things that we're going over today seem pretty basic, and you might think, like, well, why would I ever want to do something as simplistic as this? Well, these are still, like, the basis of more complicated things. Like, we take these things and do a little bit more, 
we have some real functionality here. Because what we did today isn't that much farther than making the menus for ESPN. It's just something that they took a little bit further than us. So what we'll do next uh, week, no, not next week. Thursday. This is not Thursday. Wishful thinking. Thinking is <laughs> Thursday already. Uh, what we'll do Thursday is we'll continue along with this and start doing it for more like real stuff, purposeful stuff. And we'll see how you can put together maybe several statements to, to, uh, to carry out a task. And that's what we'll be doing for the remainder of the semester, just looking at better and better examples of JavaScript. Are there any questions? All right, we'll see.